during the pandemic, I got really into DIY audio hardware. Uh, I learned to solder. I was building Eurorack modules initially from kits, but later on I learned that I would have more options. I purchased a PCB and front panel from manufacturers like nonlinear circuits. First of all, you have this long list of components called a bill of materials or BOM, which are all the components that you need to source for a particular project. If you're planning to build multiple projects, you have to copy over that bill of materials into a spreadsheet and figure out which components overlap with other builds so that you can save money on shipping. And then you realize that for many synthesizer modules, there are multiple components which could possibly work for any item on the bill of materials. And that brings us to the second obstacle faced by many new DIY electronics hobbyists. When you look at a component on a website like Mauser, or if you look at the component's uh, information sheet from the manufacturer, you realize that the same component is manufactured to different component sizes. There are different voltage standards and different tolerances. Sometimes the same or similar component is manufactured by different manufacturers at different price points. Or sometimes the component listed in your bill of materials has been discontinued or has a strange suffix composed of letters and numbers that you don't understand. All of these challenges make getting into DIY electronics very intimidating for beginners. And even with experience, it can be frustrating to manage your personal inventory of components, keeping track of where components are stored and how many you have left while also soldering and testing your DIY builds. I wanted to solve all of these problems and make DIY electronics much easier for beginners like me who are coming to the field with little prior experience from electronics. My day job is in software, so I started to build a tool that would help solve all of these pain points. I chose the name Bomb Squad, which is a cute take on Bill of Materials, I think. Uh, I hired a designer to design a logo for the, the tool. I even hired a DevOps engineer to uh, deploy the tool on DigitalOcean and help me set up continuous integration and deployment. But when the pandemic got a little bit less intense, I got really busy. I got a new job. My wife and I had a daughter recently, and this has kept us really busy for the last couple of years. But today I'm really excited to announce that Bomb Squad is finally ready to start accepting our first users. Um, it's an open source project. The code is freely available uh, over on GitHub. Uh, if you have a software background, we would love to incorporate your suggestions. Uh, it's actually a great project to contribute to if you're new to open source and looking for a project to make your first contributions to open source uh, with. Uh, for context, it's a uh, Dockerized Django app with a React front end. Uh, we're using PostgreSQL for the database, and we're using React Query on the front end, and I'll be adding TypeScript uh, over time as I have a chance to refactor over the next year. Now, I'd love to show you some of the features that I've built into Bomb Squad. This really is just the tool that I wish I'd had when I was new to the DIY audio hardware community. And I'm really looking to incorporate your feedback, so please tell me what you think, and please join the mailing list so I can keep you updated on new features. Okay, so this is what you see when you go to bombsquad.com. Um, it's just a simple list of Eurorack modules at the moment, and I've just added a few for testing, um, but ultimately the goal is that uh, this will include um, just about any DIY project you might find online, um, including um, you know, DIY guitar pedals and, and things that are, are not specifically Eurorack focused. Um, so there's just a few features here. You can add modules to a built list or a want to build list. And at the moment, that'll allow you to, to take some basic notes on uh, the module and, and the build process. Um, but eventually, the, the vision is to build this out to be more of a blogging platform where you can share um, pictures of your build process and notes and even interact with, with community, uh, community members uh, on uh, your, your, your feedback uh, relating to that build. Um, so let's just go to uh, Triple Sloth here, which is a great nonlinear circuits module. And we'll take a look at that. So uh, right away, you just have a few uh, useful links here. You have a uh, link to the manufacturer page, uh, also the, the BOM and uh, the modular grid page. And um, you have a little bit of information about the module. And then as we scroll down here, this is really the kind of the heart of the project. This is uh, the uh, interactive BOM. Um, so this is, a, this is a version of the manufacturer's BOM. And you can see if there's multiple versions of the PCB. Uh, there, there's also um, tabs for those. Um, but where this really becomes powerful uh, is um, when we look at the components that can fulfill any item on the BOM. So uh, remember that uh, a BOM is kind of a wish list. It's a list of 
components to build a module, but there may be uh, many individual components from different manufacturers or components with, with subtle differences that can fulfill a particular item on the BOM. Uh, so for example, if we go down and we take a look at the LEDs here, now that opens up and we have a sub table actually that shows uh, a list of different LEDs that actually fulfill the bipolar twin pin LED here. So we need three of those um, and we could source these from eBay or Tata or Mauser. Um, and we also can see the price. Um, and there's also a, a feature here uh, where uh, community members can actually review um, this component for this particular build. So this is not uh, a, a rating of the component's quality in general. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a review of the component for this particular uh, build. Um, so if we actually go and log in, um, I'm gonna go and log in now really quick. And for login, um, we have uh, a couple of different options. Right now we're supporting login with uh, Google and Discord. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. I've previously logged in, so uh, it's got me there. So I am now logged in and I'm gonna come back down to the triple sloth module here at the bottom. Now you can see that the interactive uh, BOM looks a little bit different. <laughs> um, so this is really where the power of this platform comes from. So the interactive BOM is aware of the items that exist in your personal inventory, and it cross-checks your BOM against your personal inventory. Um, so you can see uh, the rows that are highlighted yellow and have this little folder icon. Those are rows where I have sufficient components. Uh, some component is in sufficient quantities in my inventory uh, to, to, to build um, this component. So uh, perhaps I don't have to worry about sourcing uh, uh, TL072 uh, op amps for this, this build um, because I might have enough in my inventory. Um, now, there's a couple ones here where um, there's a shopping cart. So you can see the shopping cart. That means that I have uh, sufficient components in my shopping cart uh, to build this module. And I'll talk a little bit more about the shopping cart in a second. Um, and then you can see some darker yellow rows. And those are rows where um, I both have uh, sufficient components in my shopping cart and in my inventory to, to build. Um, this uh, module. So let's take a quick look at our inventory because this is one of the most powerful features. Uh, so we go over here to our inventory. And so this is uh, the inventory of components. This represents your physical inventory, where you store components, whether that be your garage or a closet or a box somewhere. Uh, this represents um, your, your inventory of components that you have at the moment. And there's a, uh, there's a couple of different ways uh, that where I'm trying to help you keep track of your components. Um, one feature here is that you can specify a location. So you can see this location column here. Um, this represents the, the actual location where you're storing the component. Um, and how you use this is kind of up to you. Um, but um, it, basically, your location is represented by a tree structure. So for example, uh, I know that I'm storing uh, uh, this one kilo ohm uh, resistor in the closet uh, on the top shelf. I've got a box labeled box six, and it's a, it's a cell box, right? So I have um, X and Y axes labeled with letters and numbers, and I'm storing that component in cell E4. So I can easily find the 10 resistors that I have in the closet. Um, okay, so so that's your inventory. Let's, let's go back and we'll take a quick look at the interactive bomb again. Okay. So I know that I need to... Um, that I need to, to get some capacitors. So the, there's um, uh, you know, these uh, 10 microfarad capacitors here, um, and I'm gonna take a quick look at that. So it looks like there's a few different uh, capacitors from uh, different suppliers that fulfill this. Um, so I'm just gonna go with this, this first one uh, from Mouser. And you have the option to add this either to your inventory, in which case you can specify a location where it will be stored immediately, or you can add it to your shopping list. I'm gonna add this to my shopping list. So I'm going to click Add. Now, as you can see, this row turned yellow, uh, and um, you know that represents that I've added uh, that component to my shopping list. You can also see the number uh, in your shopping list here. If, if I had any in, in my inventory, it would be in this column here. Um, now, I'm not only going to be building uh, the triple sloth. I'm going to also be building this 4HP mix module. And I know that I need some capacitors for that as well. Um, so as you can see, um, the inter interactive BOM is smart enough to know that I have that in my shopping list now. Um, but I am going to, but as you can see, it's it's not represented as being in the shopping list here because 
the interactive BOM and the shopping list are smart enough to know that those components are kind of earmarked for the other build. Um, so uh, those 18 capacitors that I just added are earmarked for the triple sloth. So I need to add some uh, for the 4HP mix build. So I'm going to do that right now. Add some of those. Um, and for good measure, I want to add some of these. Maybe I don't, uh, I haven't used these capacitors before. I'm not sure um, you know, which ones I'll like. So I'm going to add some of, of that as well. Um, now we're going to go take a look at the shopping list. So shopping list is on the left side here. Now, this is one of the most powerful features uh, in Bomb Squad. So um, previously, before um, building this tool, I would keep track of uh, purchase purchases through um, an Excel sheet. And one of the trickiest things was keeping track of um, when you needed uh, to order uh, a certain number of components for each of your builds. Um, this uh, this uh, chart really helps you keep track of that. Because for example, we can see that we're ordering uh, this 10 microfarads uh, capacitor here. Um, you can see the price. And then you can see on the uh, on, in the columns here, these are the different builds I plan to um, plan to build. So I have the 4HP mix here and I have the triple sloth here. And you can see that um, I need this same component for both of these builds. Um, so we have 18 for the triple sloth and two for the 2HP mix. And that totals out to be uh, 20. Now you can add components to your shopping list that are not associated with any um, module or, or project. Um, and that's in this column here. Um, and to do that, you would go to the components list here. Uh, and this is the complete list of, of components in the database. So you can add uh, components that are not um, for a particular build as well. Um, as you can see, um, I've got a bunch of different components uh, that I'm going to be ordering from all different uh, suppliers. And uh, the important thing to recognize here is that the shopping list, I mean, we're not selling these components. Uh, the shopping list is kind of a meta shopping list. It represents uh, the order that you need to place uh, from any supplier for a particular build. So um, you can see that I need to place an order for several different from several different suppliers. Um, but it does total up the price for you, and it shows you how much it's going to cost to um, purchase all of those uh, those components. Now, uh, when you get those uh, components from the supplier, um, you can certainly uh, add that to your inventory and you can specify a location directly here as well. Um, uh, or um, uh, if you have received all of the components, you can also add all to inventory. Um, and the platform is also smart enough to know that these components, the ones with this kind of uh, blue alert here, uh, already are in your inventory. So if you click on that, um, you can see that I already have um, this diode in my inventory. It's on the top shelf in a box called box two. Uh, and I can automatically fill in that location uh, and add it to that box, representing me receiving uh, a top up of that component and, and adding it to my physical real world uh, inventory. Um, now, uh, a lot of these suppliers do not have a great API, uh, or the API doesn't do exactly what we want, or we haven't uh, worked out the integration yet. Um, so for at, at Tata, for example, you may have to um, copy over these orders uh, individually. Of course, you can click through to the components and place those into your uh, shopping cart on Tata. Um, but for Mauser, Mauser actually has a tool that allows you uh, to copy paste in a list of um, uh, item numbers. Um, and it will automatically populate a cart for you over on Mouser. So um, there's a feature here where uh, we can copy um, that list of components, and we can uh, paste that right in uh, to the Mouser Bomb tool as well. Um, so that does speed things up a little bit uh, as well. OK, um, so I just want to go over a few kind of miscellaneous features as well. Um, that I think that covers sort of the main things. Um, but while we're on the shopping list page, you can uh, save a shopping list. If you have a favorite shopping list that you uh, like to order, um, or if you're building a large number of the same modules and you need to periodically uh, order more of uh, your list for, for those builds, um, you can save the list. And if you go to save lists, um, you have your saved lists here. Uh, and you can automatically copy that back into your um, shopping cart uh, just by, by clicking that. And it's also smart enough to sum the components with any components that are currently in your shopping cart. So it's easy uh, it's e easy to save lists and easy to, to reorder. Uh, now, if we take a look at the inventory, there's a couple features here uh, as well. Um, one thing, I don't know if it's uh, if it's uh, getting into my mid thirties or or what it is, but um, oftentimes when I'm soldering late at night, um, you know, I don't really want to be looking at the bright computer screen, um, uh, and uh, but I also want to be updating my inventory, right? Sometimes I, I ruin a component accidentally, 
or um, I don't know, I lose one on the floor or something and, and I, I need to update the, the quantity in my inventory. Um, so I've built this soldering mode and the soldering mode has a dark mode, uh, which is a little bit easier on your eyes. It also um, just increases the text size of all of your components. Um, and you can edit your uh, location directly here. And of course you can edit your quantity in your inventory uh, directly here as well. So that's just something to help you when you're actually uh, at your workbench and uh, soldering. And it, it's just a tool to help you keep your inventory updated as you're working. Um, now, speaking of keeping your inventory updated, uh, if you make a mistake, uh, we have a feature uh, to help with that as well. So we actually have a version history, uh, and this uh, represents all of the changes that you have made to your inventory recently. And you can see that there's actual versioning uh, of the inventory and the, the uh, quantities and, and things of that nature as well. So um, all of your changes to your inventory are tracked as well in case you make a mistake, and, and you can go back and correct that. Uh, now, of course, there's also the option to download a CSV um, of your inventory if you would like to do that for any reason. Um, and yeah, I think that, uh, that those are the main features of your inventory. Um, there's a few other things here. You can add components to your built or your want to build lists, of course. Uh, so I'm going to add those uh, and then those appear here. Um, and you also have the option to add notes. Uh, so you can keep track of, um, you know, uh, your, your past experience building that module or whatever you need to keep track of. Uh, and then one uh, last thing, um, something I really wanted to build into this, this platform was, uh, the, was a, a feeling of, of community um, and just basically crowdsourcing knowledge about DIY uh, audio hardware. Um, so I've also built in some features um, for, for commenting on uh, modules. Uh, you can comment on the module itself. Uh, you can also comment on the um, component for a particular build. So uh, you can go through to this component and you can see all of the builds that use that component, um, which is quite interesting if, if you're interested in how frequently a component is actually being uh, used to fulfill a bomb list item. And you can comment on um, this as well. And community comments from across the app are curated here. Um, so you can actually see what people are talking about, whether it be uh, on a module or a component. And it will take you to those conversations as well. Uh, and then I guess the last feature, which is really just mostly for fun, um, I have built out a page for the manufacturer themselves. Uh, and this page actually has a little bit of uh, uh, data representation of the uh, number of times that uh, manufacturers use particular um, components. So, so this is the number of times a uh, component, an actual component from a supplier, uh, is able to fulfill a manufacturer's bomb list item. Um, so it's not the number of times a manufacturer calls for a particular bomb list item. It's it's the number of times a component um, could be used to fulfill a manufacturer's build. That's a little bit of a subtlety here, but um, I think that this is really interesting, just in terms of seeing some some data on the components manufacturers uh, prefer to use most. You can overlay uh, different manufacturers' uh, data here uh, and look at that. Um, it's not perfect yet. There's there's a lot a lot more that needs to be done here to to allow um, efficient comparison of this data. And of course, this data will become more and more complete as um, I'm able to add more and more uh, 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 projects to to the database. Um, but for right now, uh, it's just a, a little bit of a sneak peek at uh, what's coming next with uh, with Bomb Squad. I want to keep Bomb Squad free to use forever. But I am personally investing several hundred dollars a year in maintaining the server space for the tool uh, over on DigitalOcean. Uh, so I hope you might consider supporting the project on coffee.com. It's a crowdfunding platform, which is a bit like Patreon. Um, and I'm going to include a link here uh, in case you would like to, to support the project. Uh, as a thank you to those who join at the subscriber tier, um, I'm going to be incorporating your suggestions uh, for modules and features to uh, add to the project over time. And Either way, I hope the tool is useful, I hope it's fun to use, uh, and I would love to hear your feedback and suggestions on the tool. I will see you over on bombsquad.com.